Yeah, so um, I went to a code retreat a week or two ago. That's the talk. Um, yeah, so what is a code retreat? Well, it's not just something in Redgate. Um, there's a website and everything, although it's, it's not a very big website. There's a huge amount there. Um, it calls itself a community network. And the basic ideas behind code retreat are you've got one day um, and you split it into kind of one hour um, sessions, these chunks, and you spend maybe three quarters of that coding and do a little ret retrospective at the end. You're supposed to start fresh each time. We were told to delete our code after every session. Uh, we were in pairs and we did the same task every time. In fact, Conway's Game of Life is the only task mentioned anywhere that I can find for a code retreat. So I don't know what we'll do next time or if we are actually meant to do the same thing again. Um, and there are some kind of guiding principles which uh, are kind of felt to us like restrictions, really, that, that you have to code in crazy ways uh, to encourage better code, obviously. Uh, the final thing is it's supposed to be free for outsiders to join. It's meant to be a kind of networking thing where you link up with people from other com companies. Um, we had a kind of pilot day with uh, Michael and Larry. Um, since it was basically the first time any of us had done anything like this, uh, everybody was from Redgate. We didn't kind of uh, reach out to anybody else um, for this initial one. Um, and yeah, the task was this, this Conway's Game of Life thing, uh, which is, uh, most of you have probably heard of it, all but one of us knew about it um, when, when we did the code retreat. Um, I won't go into the details of what it is, but it felt like about the right kind of size of task. Um, basically, one or two groups had got some, actually produced something working by the end of the day. And of course, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a day's work to produce that because we were um, starting again every hour. Um, it, the task really drives you more than trying to create good code, I found. It would, really tempting to just try and get it working rather than stick to the rules. Uh, but it's really good to stop and try again because there are so many what ifs when you've finished writing something. What if I've done it this way? Well, you can answer all those questions at a code retreat because it's not about getting a product out the door. It's about learning and sort of, yeah, playing around with ideas. Um, so we had all these different practices we were trying. Uh, I'll sort of try and go through most of these. Uh, single responsibility, obviously, uh, is this idea that everything should do just one thing. It was the very first session, and we were still trying to figure out how do you go about writing Game of Life. So actually, by the end of 45 minutes, most of us hadn't produced very much for that first session. We were still thinking, oh, do we start with a board? Do we have, you know, how do we represent all these squares? It can be infinitely big, help, this is getting really difficult. So most of us didn't really get anywhere on the first one. Uh, although it was interesting that some people started with the board. One group started with the fate decider class that decides whether things live or die. The sort of god class, but in a good way. Um, they managed to implement all of the rules without even defining uh, what, how the squares were arranged or anything like that. Um, another thing we tried was TDD, um, so uh, I'm sure most of you know what TDD is, but I've written it up there anyway. Um, it kind of, it basically, it worked, we were able to produce code, but we often found that the tests defined the direction the code went in, which is obviously the idea of TDD, but you tend to find that before you've even written by the time you've even written your first assertion, which is supposed to be the very first thing you write, because you ideally write your tests backwards from assertion back to the initial conditions, you've already constrained the logic of the code in some way by the time you've done that. And you then get to the situation of, well, uh, we actually want to go in a slightly different direction. Can we do this? You know, and so on. Uh, Wrapping up all primitives, it's kind of turtles all the way down. We had a size which has a width and a height which derive from dimension. You've got pages of code before you've even done anything. Um, no getters and setters. Uh, mocks and stubs for tests are required if you want to a 
assert that your um, results are what you think they should be. You can't just check the internal state of the code. Uh, and people found that really challenging and it made them think in a different way, which I think is really good. Uh, not having mutable state, that was kind of confusing because we weren't quite sure what fitted within that rule and what didn't. And I, I think we were trying too hard to follow the rule rather than the guideline. Uh, if statements, we did something really crazy to get around this. Uh, <laughs> that is not really polymorphism, is it? Uh, so, yeah, okay, I won't say more on that. Uh, for loops, um, you can always replace a for loop with recursion, but it doesn't tend to make it any more readable um, unless it's the kind of task that really lends itself to that. So it was interesting. I think it was good practice, but it didn't really, it wouldn't make it easier unless it's the kind of tree structure algorithm where that would help. Levels of indentation, again, I think they do produce very nice clean code, but they weren't actually a challenge because you just extract methods whenever you get to too many levels. So that, that's quite a useful thing because you can apply that to real code and say, okay, should this method really be going crazy like this? Um, no talking, we hated that. Um, it's like if there's two of you at a computer and one of you is doing the typing, what does the other guy do if they're not um, allowed to talk? Well, the answer, there is an answer, it's TDD ping pong. One person writes the tests and then the other person writes the code to pass the test. And that creates communication without actually uh, having to have discussions about things, which is kind of cool. Uh, no code comments just kind of makes no difference to anything. Uh, well, it's, it's a 45 minute exercise, so what are you going to put comments in the code for? It's just... um, finally, this is kind of my fault. I've discovered a, an entertaining way of doing the calculation that was kind of cool. Um, unfortunately, it turns out to be really hard to implement in C-sharp, so uh, didn't even manage to work out how to do that convolution in C-sharp. Um, it's trivial in, in some high-level languages, but you kind of need something matrix-oriented for it to really work. Uh, yeah, that, that's most of it, really. Um, the thoughts that people went away with, we put down our kind of answers to questions about what have you learned, what surprised you, how are you going to do things differently. Um, and most people said redoing the problem is really, really good for understanding it properly. People hate having a massive legacy code base that they um, kind of can't change. So being able to attack something three different ways in a, an environment where the end product isn't important. That, that is something people really enjoyed. Uh, pair programming, also people said they wanted to do more of that, um, especially with TV ping pong, where you write the test and somebody else writes the code. Um, various people thought different things about immutables, but most people thought they were good, they promote functional programming. Um, and TDD people found really hard, tell don't ask people found really really hard and really 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 hard to do well. Um, and the recursion just kind of made things a bit trickier to debug. Um, but most people agreed that uh, code retreats are really cool and we should do more. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any questions? Have you figured out tell don't ask yet? Sorry? Have you figured out tell don't ask yet? Tell don't ask. I wouldn't say I've figured it out. I mean, I, I've played with it more. I wouldn't say I, uh, that, that I, you know, I don't think I'll ever have that completely kind of something I just do without thinking about it. Um, yeah. Do you think the way you've, you actually write code in your day-to-day -day life has changed the result of it? Um, I think it's changed a little as a result of one code retreat. I think that I, I could, there's no way you could just say, oh, I've been to one now, that's, uh, that's sorted. I think it would have to be something that I continue to do regularly. Uh, and it, it's, it's also a kind of a thing where I keep having ideas, what if I did this, what if I did this? And those gradually build up over time, and I can explore those in an event like a code retreat. 
without worrying too much about what the effects down the road are going to be. So it's also a way to kind of answer the questions that are gradually building up. Just a quick addendum to the implementation thing. So I discovered one thing that is it's really good at, which is, um, what do you call it when you have multiple returns in one function? Bad. Bad. <laughs> Badness is avoided like that, because oh. you can't really do it all easy. But when you do it, it's you because it's obviously stupid. Yeah. So it is a reasonable thing to work towards. <laughs> Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Seth. Cool.